Good morning. Good morning. I'm down in the basement this morning at the house. Uh, sometimes I find it easier in the morning getting things together and uh, so I can get things prepped. Many times I, I ran to church and in my running of busyness, I'm trying to hook things up and get things started. So I've been sitting here at the desk here a little bit, kind of going over some stuff that I feel the Lord's been putting on my heart. However, interesting enough, uh, I usually try to write some things down, but uh, last night, the Lord, I just feel like I didn't have anything to be able to, to write down, which is kind of scary. <laughs> I mean, he gave me some things to think of, but I didn't write anything down. I have my two little notes here, a couple things I want to cover in what's laid on the heart. Hello, Star. Hope you're doing well today. Good morning to you. I hear we're going to have a, I like that picture I see for on your Dang, that's beautiful. Um, yeah, looking at 67 degrees uh, on Sunday, I think. That's pretty amazing. So we're getting very close to spring. I believe what, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday is going to be uh, jump up Sunday or spring forward, as they say. So that's coming up around the corner. Um, I believe that we go for the full hour, I think. I know that they're, they passed some things in Congress, but it hasn't gone all the way through that. I think uh, daylight savings time may be a thing of the past or a different something at some point. Good morning, Carla. So we'll just see. We'll see what happens. But I think this time we're going for the full hour. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> make sure you keep your ears and eyes peeled to find out anything to make sure for next Sunday. Well, this coming Sunday is uh, going to be a special treat for people. Um, I know it's Missions Sunday. Uh, there's been a focus of it this week going into this Sunday. And I know they'll be talking about uh, pledges and different things and supporting various uh, missions across the world that the Grace has the opportunity to be involved in. Uh, great work of missionaries, what they do. I've had the opportunity to meet several over the course of time while here at Grace. And I've always been impressed uh, by what message they bring in the hearts of missionaries, not to put anybody on a pedestal, but just obviously um, living out the Great Commission in ways that it, we would consider inconvenient, inconvenient in regarding our lifestyles and things that we're used to here in our country with so much that we have. And so um, this Sunday, again, like I said, missions, uh, several people have signed up for the Dinner tonight, we get to have an opportunity to talk about missions with children. Uh, Connie, her daughter Trudy, was a missionary many years ago now. Hard to believe that time flies. But uh, she's going to be sharing about what she did, and so we're going to be doing some neat things with that tonight. So we're excited about that. But today, my topic is uh, looking at endurance. Endurance. And... Uh, you know, as I've always share every week, it sounds probably like a broken record, but most people don't know what that means. Uh, that's <laughs> some of you may understand what the broken record is, the idea that goes over and over and skips. I know I say it often, but you know, I, I was thinking this morning and last night how blessed I am uh, to be at Grace, to walk along with you all and, and serve with you, and uh, you know, we have solid preaching from the pulpit and. Uh, which is a blessing. Good morning, Shirley. Total total blessing there. And uh, to, uh, for me, I get to walk along with staff there that have a heart for Christ and with you all and many lay ministries and service within the church. Oh my goodness. I just bless beyond measure. And uh, I often tell people that uh, serving in the church full time, uh, I feel like I've been going to school all these years. I really do because I get to uh, walk alongside so many uh, that are living their life out faithfully and, and are at least attempting their best. And as you know, iron sharpens iron. And so I'm a beneficiary of all the uh, individuals uh, that attend Grace. I'm a beneficiary of their, their pursuit of God. And so anyhow, so I'm going to get started here. We're going to start in prayer, and I'm just going to read a little bit of a verse and talk about a couple of things regarding endurance. And I hope that you'll be blessed with the message, with my limited notes, but what's on my heart, hopefully it'll come out correctly for you. <laughs> uh, dear Heavenly Father, I just I thank you for who you are. 
always, you are faithful. You are a faithful God. You've been faithful over generations to generations. Today we are a result of the good news that has been shared on behalf to us through your servants and, and those that have been faithful in service to you. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for the word that it is really the, the, the road map for us to navigate through this life. It, it, it gives us substance and purpose to our lives, and we can rest assured that your word is true. And despite the things that might go on in this world that run contrary to what you say, we know that your word has stood the test of time and it always will. And so even in our lives, when we we are rocked by things or we are off the beaten path, we can come back to your word. When we are walking a straight line, we can, and on the path, we can go to your word and it protects and shelters us and gives us wisdom and knowledge for the things, again, that we, we have in this life to do. And thank you again for your word as well as it's transformative. It is always about a good work in our lives and it always changes us for the better so that we are a work in progress and that we are able to continually renew our mind and become more of what you've always intended us to be. So we love you and we just thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, Good morning, Barbara. Oh, my eyes. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. Now, I want to go to the first scripture is in Hebrews 12, 1. I got on my phone here, so I act like I'm really techie here and pull it up on my phone. <laughs> so, let me get that here. Okay, let's see. Sorry, take one little second. I wish I had some music that you could play. Da, 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 da. You know, I'm okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to read from uh, 12, uh, verse, or chapter 12 of Hebrews and read through just the first couple of verses. It says here, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, in our lives, we get to experience many things. We have hopes and dreams God puts on our lives. We have hopes and dreams for those that we love, that are in our circles that we walk with. And we have time. Now, someone told me the other day that it's so true. You know, often many people will say, boy, time is just flying by. And, and what the person told me, which I think is such an accurate description of time, at least for me and maybe for you, is that sometimes a day in itself can seem like it goes long. But years and weeks seem to go by fast. It's a weird thing. Sorry, my computer is bringing up something here. Hopefully that doesn't mess up. Okay, good. Okay, there you go. Sorry. You had a little prompt thing that came up. And so it, it could be, you know, feel like this. Everything is going by so quickly. And so when enduring, sometimes uh, in life, we have maybe perhaps a lack of patience, a lack of patience or ability to endure the things we face because we don't see the result quick enough or that we hope for. And I was looking in a um, devotion and looking through uh, some commentary last night. I'm going to pull up, if I could here, the definition of what was given by one individual was related to endurance. And uh, it says here, endurance is needed to run the race. That race is it's referring to Hebrews 12.1. And it says, endurance translates the ancient Greek word hupumon. I don't know if I said that right. Hupumon, 
which does not mean that the patience which sits down and accepts things, but the patience which masters them. It is a determination, unhurrying and yet undelaying, which goes steadily on and refuses to be deflected. I love that definition of endurance. This, as it says, it is a determination, an unhurrying and yet undelaying, which goes steadily on and refuses to be deflected. So applicable in our lives, in our Christian lives, that we must, it allows us to look at this, this determination that God can give us in our walk. Now, um, this week, uh, I had an opportunity to talk with a couple of different folks and, uh, and talking about different things and about witnessing and about hoping for those that are considered, we consider maybe prodigals or those that have turned their back on God and, and having a heart for the lost. You know, often we have the heart for uh, a family member. But even the lost in general, in which, as we will see, as we know, missionaries have a heart for lost in general. They see everyone equally on the equally playing field uh, of the need for Christ and the heart to reach all, and not just those that are the closest in our circles. But with this endurance at times, I know that uh, in this discussion I had this week, sometimes um, when we don't see result in a person's life, when we're witnessing or when we're sharing, when we don't see things coming to fruition, it's easy for us not to endure. It is easy for us to become less determined. In a way, we, we may tend to give up. We may tend to think, well, there's no results. And, and so we lay that down. We, we become either calloused, maybe. We set it on the shelf uh, in, in our minds. But we don't pursue. We don't pursue it because we feel that there is no change. Now, our own walks. So what I want to hit on a couple of things with this endurance, and it applies to a couple of things. You know, individually, you know, God, as He has done, I'm going to read this verse here out of Romans, and I'll, I'll rewrite to this first point about what God has done for us. Sometimes we might also, one, be concerned with our lack of improvement. Two, what I've just mentioned here about the concern for others, the endurance in our prayer life and walk with that. And then, and then the idea of uh, our, even our work and our calling. So let me read this verse here because it just makes me think of what we've been forgiven because sometimes, you know, the enemy, when we are wanting to change and be serve, and serve God and maybe things don't happen as quickly as we hope. We want to be able to be used by him, but then God allows us time in between what he might be calling us to and, and having it come to be that we too sometimes can lose focus there as well. So endurance here for me in this verse I was reading kind of covers a couple areas. And, uh, so let me, uh, it makes me think of a couple areas anyway. So let me pull up here the other verse. And this comes out of Romans chapter 5, verses uh, 6 through 8. And it just talks about uh, what God did for us here. It says here, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, wrapping this up here, this just simple thought today. God met us right where we were at, in our sin, because he took on, as we know, the sins of the world, and he met us right there at that place, willingly, willingly. And so in this walk of endurance, the two things I'm just going to wrap up with is one, the idea of our personal walk. 
we may feel at times that, again, like I was mentioning, things aren't happening quick enough. Or uh, we have failed again. We have done something again that has tripped us up and we feel we are not worthy. Well, we aren't worthy. But through Christ, we are made worthy in the sight of God. And so I encourage you, you know, this endurance, this determination, you know, this, this race. I wrote down a note to myself here, um, you know, when it comes to our personal walk and that, that running the race, I thought about this, about how Christ and how God used Christ for us. And really, God is literally at the starting place for us, right? If we're thinking about this enduring this race, this race that we're running on, think about the idea that God is at the starting gate with us. And that the beautiful thing that God is along the path with us. And then also that God is at the end of the race. There's not one part or place in this race, in this determined effort that we're doing, that God is leaving us without his grace and mercy and his presence. You know, he's at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. So I, I, I hope that you take heart today in knowing that in your own personal walk, you may not be where you feel God is using you fully. You may feel you have these gifts and talents, and you're thinking, why, God, why can't I use them? Why don't I have a place to use them yet? Take heart, because in that process, as you yield to him every day, he is molding you and shaping you and creating a good work, working through you, mind you, in that day, and preparing you for the things to come. Now, the second piece, I want you to be encouraged today for those loved ones, those within your family, those that are uh, in your circle of friends, those that are co-workers, I would encourage you to endure as well. Intercessory prayer is a powerful tool. And we, and we believe, believe in the power of prayer, don't we? And the idea of knowing that there's not one word that comes out of our mouths as God's children, when we have him as our Lord and Savior, that he does not hear. We are to intercede on behalf. I was reading scriptures last night in, in the book of John where it talked about just before Jesus was let off, just before the, the you know, in, uh, in the garden, before he was arrested, he prayed for his disciples. He prayed for us, all followers of him. Jesus prayed for us. <laughs> so if Jesus prayed for us, I want to encourage you to endure the race and be determined in your efforts to pray for those that are lost in your family or are going down a path that you wish you could stop them, you wish you could motivate them to change them, but believe that God is hearing those prayers. God is able to do a good work. Even though, again, in our time, as I mentioned to start off with, a day may be, seem long, and the years or weeks seem to go by fast. We may feel we're losing ground. Our God is a great God. Nothing goes beyond his ability to do or see or know. So let's wrap that up. I just hope you're encouraged today as we, you know, as, as we said here, I'm going to pull that scripture back up again from Hebrews. Let me see here. That we would all, I want to encourage you that we all would run with endurance. Run with endurance in that determined way, knowing that God is with us throughout. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, that you are the, at the starting gate. You have been there for us, even at the beginning. When we were first called by you and we received you, we took that advantage of the free gift you offered through your sacrifice of your son. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us along the paths of life. Though we might feel that we are alone, you are there. And you are just a, not a phone call away. You're just a call from our heart away. And God, we thank you that you're, you're there at the finish line. We have the hope of eternity. In their efforts here, we don't know how all these things measure up. We don't know all the works that we do for you, how they go into your larger and most marvelous plan. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a Kleenex. I got a cold, by the way, which you probably already know. Sorry. <laughs> um, Lord, 
we don't know the tapestry that you're weaving together when all these lives are connected in this beautiful story of your redemption that you give all of us. And so, God, I pray that we would run the race with endurance. We would place our trust completely in you, knowing that you are good and able, more than able, and that you're righteous and holy, and you will do as you need. As we yield our will, even in our prayers, as we lay it down before you, we can put our full trust knowing that you're going to do a good and mighty work. So we thank you, God, in that, as we run the race with endurance, we thank you for the joy that we can have in this life. When we go through trials and go through things, we know that you are about a good work. You are about a good work. Thank you. Lord, for the opportunity to serve you. You've given that job for every one of us. You've given the Great Commission for every single one. So we all have a part, and every part matters. So God, as the body of your church, each one of us, given a talent, given an ability, each one of us, might we be a powerful force, a mighty force that runs the race with endurance for a world of need. We love you, and it's your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for your time today. I hope that you have a great day planned and hope to see you all soon on Sunday. God bless you guys. Remember, go bless. Have a great day. Bye.